Hey, we are back at the Prospect Hut, and we're going to talk about the trade the Mets made with the Marlins. Uh, and really, I'm going to read you stuff from Fangraphs, and they give their analysis of the of the players the Mets picked up, and they are obviously Marco Vasquez and Ronald Hernandez. But before we get into this video, I need you to subscribe and like this video. This channel is doing really well. I'm very happy with it. But uh, here we go. So obviously, there's been a lot of sort of consternation about this trade here in New York. For weeks, people have been complaining the Mets needed to sell. They finally sold, and all we've heard here is complaints uh, today. Uh, now I'm going to read you what was has been discussed with the Marlins people, uh, people that follow the Marlins farm system, and this is from Fangraphs. So I'm going to read you this, and I'll put the link into this, into this video so you can check it out. In his Marlins prospect list, Eric Longenhagen described Marcus, Marco Vargas as in the fan grass wheelhouse as a compact lefty hitting infielder who might have special ball-to-ball -ball ability. Eric's not wrong. I find myself gravitating to this skill set over and over again when perusing the minors for players to follow. Vargas is tearing the Florida Complex League to shreds this year. Walking a quarter of the time while rarely striking out and showing doubles power too. He's no lock to turn into an even average power hitter, but the early returns there are solid. At just 18 years old, there's a lot of projecting left to do. And his hit tool will have to do a lot of work, but it's a skill set that can work in the majors and has an extremely high ceiling at times. Think Jose Ramirez as the best possible version. That's a far-fetched outcome, but this amount of bat-to-ball -ball ability is often a marker for elite hand-eye coordination, which lets hitters get the most out of their raw power. Vargas doesn't have an obvious defensive home, but as a second baseman, third base type of a high offensive ceiling, he has room to disappoint on roughly one scale and still profiles a big league regular. I'm exactly the type of analyst who will overvalue this skill set, and I know it. But I'd look at Vargas and see a potential future stud. Interesting. The combination of this amount of contact and strike zone understanding in the low minors has ex historically bode extremely well for a prospect's chances of making the majors. And at the end of the day, that's a lot of what I'm looking for. Of course, Vargas is hardly a slam dunk. Even seeing his numbers through my special pair of rose-colored prospect glasses. He's 18. He hasn't played a game above the complex yet. If he were ever, if he were putting up these numbers in double A as a 20-year-old or something like that, he'd be a lot higher up prospect list. There's still plenty of time for him to fail. I really like the ceiling here, but when you're trading for teenagers, the error bars are massive. In terms of prospect grades, Eric is up to 45 plus v, FV on Vargas after his incendiary season, which puts him in the top five of a thin farm system, which is the Mets farm system. Ronald Hernandez is the less of the two prospects, at least in my and Eric's eyes. But he's also interesting. He's nearly two years older than Vargas, but he has more walks and strikeouts this year in the Florida Complex League. And he's hitting a gaudy, gaudy, 298, 464, 562 in limited playing time. It's a similar skill set to Vargas, to be honest. Ball to, bat to ball first, power second if you're lucky. Will he stick a catcher as he rises through the minor league ranks? We think so. But he's a long way off. Will he develop more power? We don't think so. But again, there's time for plenty to change. His statistical profile is less interesting chiefly because of his age. Imagine what Vargas might do in the same league with another two years of physical maturity. The article says this. I've heard a lot, and as the blog says this, I've heard a lot of Mets fans and analysts question the return here. Not so much for the players. Come on, even being generous about how knowledgeable the average fan is. No one has heard of these guys. I've only heard of Vargas because I love looking at minor league leaderboards and I write about baseball full time. No, the reason people are questioning return is because neither player is nearly major league ready. And the Mets have a team made up of men of a certain age. I don't buy that assessment. If I were the Mets, I'd be trying to build a team for the whole future, not just the immediate future. Aha! Trading for need, asking the Marlins for a double-A swingman who could spell Justin Verlin the next year instead of focusing on getting the most raw value. It's how you end up tripping the, from failure to failure. 
trying to patch the last problem is never as good of, of a strategy as going out and finding the next big thing. There's another factor here. Money can buy the kinds of players that double-A swingmen turn into in the majors. The Mets went out and signed Jose Quintana and Adam Montevino and Robinson this offseason. Not to mention some bigger ticket pitchers too. Meanwhile, their farm system needs replenishing. The trade of Robinson is one of their best chances to do that this year. Now, I haven't seen these players. Um, no one has seen these guys. The kids. Um, but obviously, Vargas is the is the key piece in this trade. Um, he is now currently the Mets' sixth best prospect, according to MLB.com. Now, I would mention that they have not uh, included the draft picks. Mets have signed 20 of their 23 draft picks uh, this year. The other three are going back into the draft next year, or one might be going to college. Who knows? It doesn't matter. But the Mets now have a will have a better sense of where the farm system is when we get to see you know a printout, quite frankly, of all the players that they have uh, ranked in their system. Some rankings have Colin Hoke as number two. It'll be interesting to see where. Vargas falls now in line to a more current list. The list that you see on there is, is one right now. Uh, what it will be a month from now, it might be very different. Um, they kind of keep it very static. There's no up and down. They do it every few months on, on MLB.com. But it, it, this is very exciting to me as a fan because that means the Mets are building a, a strong farm system. That is the foundation. A farm system is the foundation of your organization. You don't have a farm system, you have no chance of being good and being able to sustain yourself and to be able to sustain injuries. Uh, if the Mets had built a better farm system over the last five years in particular, really since 2015, 2016 on, uh, we would not be in this fix right now with having to sign these veteran players and, and really going with, with within. And the best way to build a bullpen, quite frankly, is through your farm system. It's the best way. So... Let me know what you think about this video, of course. Please subscribe to the Prospect Hut. Let me know what you think about all the things that I read here from fan graphs. Uh, they, they got a good beat on it better than I do. So, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.